Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. We spend hours on our phones, scrolling, texting and watching videos. But have you ever thought about how this shapes your body? In this video we'll break down how mobile device habits impact your muscles, bones, joints and fascia and how your body adapts to the strain. While these compensations may seem subtle at first, over time they can lead to significant postural and movement changes. By understanding these mechanisms, you'll gain better awareness of what's happening beneath the surface. Let's start at the top of your body, where the head and neck are often the first to feel the effects of poor posture caused by mobile device use. When you look down at your phone, your head tilts forward, placing increased strain on the cervical spine or your neck. Did you know that for every 15 degrees of forward tilt, the load on your neck increases by 4 to 6 kilograms? Imagine holding a bowling ball in front of you for hours. This is the kind of strain your neck experiences. The upper trapezius, for example, works overtime to support your head against gravity when you look down at your phone. Instead of simply stabilizing, this muscle ends up carrying a heavier load than it's designed for, which exacerbates the strain. The levator scapulae, another key muscle in the neck and upper back, plays a significant role in lifting and stabilizing the shoulder blade. However, when this muscle is under prolonged strain, it can transmit tension through the surrounding fascial structures. This not only contributes to local stiffness and discomfort, but also creates a ripple effect, impacting the neck's mobility and the alignment of the upper spine. The suboccipital muscles, located at the base of your skull, also become strained from prolonged forward head posture. This strain often contributes to tension headaches and discomforts in your upper back as well. Meanwhile, the deep neck flexors, such as the longus coli or the longus capitis, become weak due to lack of use. These muscles are vital for stabilizing the cervical spine and when they are underutilized, you may lose some of their natural proprioception, which is your body's sense of position and balance. Forward head posture also compresses the scalenes and other accessory breathing muscles and restricts the fascia in the neck. This restriction limits these muscles' ability to support efficient diaphragmatic breathing, which can lead to shallow chest breathing. Over time, these altered breathing patterns add strain to the neck and upper chest, further impacting posture and overall breathing efficiency. Now let's move down to the shoulders, another area heavily impacted by prolonged phone use. When you hold your phone for long periods, it often leads to rounded shoulders and poor scapular alignment. Here's what's happening. The upper trapezius becomes overloaded, staying tense to support the weight of your arms and counteract the forward pull. This tension can radiate upward, causing headaches and neck discomfort. Meanwhile, the rhomboids and middle trapezius, which are responsible for stabilizing and retracting the shoulder blades, weaken from disuse. This imbalance contributes to the forward slouch, while the fascia adapts to the new posture by thickening, developing adhesions or becoming less elastic. Additionally, the thoracic outlet, where nerves and blood vessels pass through the shoulder region, can become compressed due to tight fascia and muscles. This restriction can lead to numbness or tingling sensations in your arms and hands, further complicating the issue. Let's also take a closer look at how mobile device use affects the entire arm. First, the upper arm muscles, including the biceps brachii and the brachialis, play a supporting role as you hold your phone. While they aren't the primary movers, they remain engaged in a static position for prolonged periods, leading to subtle fatigue and increased tension that affects the entire arm. Moving down the forearm, your deep flexor muscles become overworked as they continuously grip the device. This sustained contraction leads to tightness, reduced mobility and an increased risk of conditions like texting thumb or carpal tunnel syndrome. At the wrist and hand, prolonged strain fatigues the intrinsic hand muscles and all the muscles that control your thumb movement. 
This repetitive stress can reduce circulation, weaken your grip strength, and make fine motor tasks more challenging. It's not just your muscles and fascia that are affected. Your spine also endures significant strain. Here's a quick overview of how mobile device use impacts different sections of your spine. At the cervical spine, your neck, forward head postures increases pressure on the vertebrae, which can lead to discompression and irritation of the nearby nerve roots. The thoracic spine, your mid-back, becomes stiff due to rounded shoulders, limiting spinal extension and mobility. Of course, also your lumbar spine, your lower back, experiences increased disc pressure, which can contribute to discomfort over time. And of course, if you now add sitting into the equation, a whole new set of problems arises. But that's a topic for another video. Having said this, I think we've covered enough for today on how the body adapts to prolonged phone use. Of course, we could take this all the way down to the soles of your feet, but that might be a bit much for one video. I'm also aware that we haven't touched on the psychological effect or other broader impacts. That's why I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have noticed any other compensations or have insights to add. Feel free to share them in the comments. Just to be clear, this isn't about fear-mongering or making mobile devices the villain. It's about taking a curious look at how the body finds intelligent ways to adapt to demands placed on it. Understanding these patterns helps us to become more aware of our movement habits and how we can support our body's natural resilience. If you're looking for ways to improve your posture or counteract these effects, there are already countless videos on YouTube covering that. I don't think it's necessary to repeat the same advice here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing, sharing or liking this video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next. Have a good one.